a political objective was won and now America is on a course that it will be difficult for her to change an economic objective was again one the treasury of the people of America was raped over a hundred billion dollars gone and more to come so that Halliburton and Bechtel and the war machine of America can profit from the suffering of soldiers and sailors and Iraqi people now Iraq has been occupied for over one year and we have discovered no weapons of mass destruction they cannot with truth tie al-Qaeda to Saddam Hussein if you know anything about Osama bin Laden he is what you would call a religious zealot who saw Saddam Hussein as a hypocrite who went away from Islam to follow the path of socialism so there is no way that Osama would have been connected to Saddam but the neoconservatives wanted to make a case for war and they did and the grief of the American people was manipulated so that you would back your president in this evil misadventure and now everything that I warned him that would come to pass is now coming to pass the coalition is falling apart every day American soldiers are dying dying for what no weapons of mass destruction no tie or link to terrorism hmm. but he was a brutal dictator who killed his own people well that's a justification then to go to war with China or to go to war with any country on the earth because there is no country no leader who has not at some time killed some members of his own country America has killed some of her own citizens at Waco. Is that a predicate for war? Ari Shavit, a writer for the Daily Haaretz of Israel, had an interview with some of the neoconservatives. He interviewed William Crystal and Charles Krauthammer and I would like you to hear what they said Mr. Ari Shavit wrote the war in Iraq was conceived by 25 neoconservative intellectuals most of them Jewish who are pushing President Bush to change the course of history. Two of the journalists, William Crystal and Charles Krauthammer, say it's possible. But another journalist, Thomas Friedman, not part of the group, is skeptical. Mr. Shavitz asked Mr. Crystal the question, what is this war about? And this interview was published on May the 4th a few days after President Bush's landing on that ship saying mission accomplished Mr. Crystal replied listen carefully that at one level it is the war that George Bush is talking about a war against a brutal regime that has in its possession weapons of mass destruction but at a deeper level it is a greater war for the shaping of a new Middle East it is a war that is intended to change the political culture of the entire region 
Now, is that what your children are going to be asked to fight for? Because the neoconservatives are now advancing a war with Syria, a war with Iran, soon Sudan. And I'm hoping that Muammar Gaddafi, though he has gotten rid of weapons of mass destruction and is on a course of rapprochement with America, I'm hoping that Gaddafi won't think that these neoconservatives intend to be at peace with him. Because as long as that man lives, what is in his mind? They will consider it a threat and they will ultimately work to remove him from power. Pakistan must be careful because Pakistan already has weapons of mass destruction, but now Pakistan is an ally of the United States of America. But America has said that if a radical regime comes to power, in Pakistan, America will swoop down on Pakistan and remove all of her nuclear weapons. Because in reality, they do not want any Muslim nation to have weapons of mass destruction. Syria and its president, Bashar al-Assad, said recently, I will get rid of mine when Israel gets rid of hers. Resolution 687 of the Security Council says no weapons of mass destruction should be in the Middle East. So no Arab nation has it, but Israel has enough weapons to destroy the whole Arab world. And this is why there's no real movement in the peace process. Because weapons of mass destruction on both sides in the Cold War produced detente. People have to sit down and talk when they both have the power of mutual annihilation. But as long as one has that power and the other doesn't, then you'll get peace but on the terms of the one with the greatest amount of arms. And that's why there's no peace in the Middle East and there will not be any. But even deeper to Muslims. In another article by Mr. Jim Loeb, it's called U.S. from nation building in Iraq to religion building. What do you mean religion building? Paul Wolfowitz, the Secretary of Defense, under Secre Deputy Secretary of Defense says, we need an Islamic reformation. Daniel Pipes, who was appointed by President Bush to the Board of Directors of the U.S. Institute for Peace, said that the ultimate goal of the war on terrorism had to be Islam's modernization. Now what America is seeking is actually to change Islam to make Islam suitable and non-threatening to Western hegemony over the entire world. So the war is not just against brutal dictators. The war at the root is against Islam. The government will not admit to that. But I see signs that in, Af in Iraq, when the Shiites asked for a popular election, knowing that they are 60% of the population of Iraq, they said they wanted an Islamic government. And Secretary of Defense Rumsfeld said, we will not have any of that. Meaning that if they want an Islamic government that's not democratic, America will not tolerate that. In the neoconservative idea, 
America must reshape the world in America's image or be shaped in the image of the world. Now that's at the root of the war. And that war will rage on. But I say to you, that there is no way that I, as a Muslim, could countenance my children or grandchildren fighting a war against fellow believers in any part of the world. And once the American people understand the agenda of the neoconservatives, you would be foolish to send your children to die for that which is against the best interest of America but in the best interest of Israel. All of the agenda of the neoconservatives was to bring President Bush in line with Israel and use the power of the American military to destroy the real and perceived enemies of Israel. Iraq never threatened America, could not threaten America, but as long as Saddam Hussein was alive, in their minds he was a threat to Israel. Syria is a threat to Israel. Iran is a threat to Israel. Anyone that does not believe in their justification of the state of Israel on Palestinian lands is an enemy that must be destroyed. Do you want your children to die for this? The former Prime Minister Netanyahu, before the war in Iraq, was patrolling the halls of Congress, lobbying American senators to send our children to die, really, for Israel. Since Israel's existence, American taxpayer dollars have contributed over a hundred billion dollars to maintain that state. And the neoconservative idea was to bring President Bush totally in line with the ideas, the thinking, the policies of the Likud party in Israel. And now they are saying that President George W. Bush is the greatest friend that Israel has had of any president in this country. Well, if, um, if George W. Bush is their greatest friend, then how can he be an honest broker in a search for peace? Now, the thinking of these neoconservatives is written of in Scripture. In the book of Revelations 2 and 9, it reads, I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. What is the blasphemy? A Jew is a noble name. A Jew means one who is in a covenant relationship with God in obedience to the divine laws, statutes, and commandments of God. But these people claim to be Jews, but they're not in obedience to God's law. They have given a mission of evil a divine look on it. And George W. Bush has swallowed that bait. Hook, line, and sinker. The synagogue of Satan is a gathering of persons of like mind and spirit who are in opposition to the will of God. So Paul said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Well, in the peace process, no 
American president has been able to deliver and President Bush is the worst in that line to deliver because he is so in line with the thinking of those in opposition to peace.